have the same we shall overcome nonviolent mentality. Mm-hmm. Right. They're going to fight back. That's you right. Know, America, this is your shot. You better get it right. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and people are so willing now. You, you hear a lot of people talking about, you know, I've, I've seen on a couple of occasions and uh, corporately people, let's talk about systemic racism. Let's talk about <laughs> institutionalized racism. You know, that now they're all willing to talk about that. But, you know, I don't, I, I know those terms and they exist and I know those things exist. But all that is, all an institution is, and all that a system is, is a group of damn people. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and when you say systemic racism and institutional, people are willing to talk about that because it absolves them of having to take any personal responsibility about what they're going to do themselves yes. as individuals. How, so, so my question to all the other folks who are now on board, what are you going to do differently? You know, cause, mm-hmm. cause if, if every, if every individual does what they're supposed to do, systemic racism, institutionalized racism goes away over some time. Over right. if, if you step in, but if you right. keep talking about it, like it's this big ominous thing that we, Right. No, it's it's you every day making every day. making a decision differently than the one you made the day before. Right. You know, uh, right. To to handle this thing differently, to look at these people, uh, to look at everybody as you, as an equal, uh, a potential equal. And of course, if we all got, if we all get to 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 buy into this, if we all get to take part in this thing, that rising tide lifts all boats. You know, if we, but they don't see it that way. You know, they they're just like, ah. Eh. No, I, I, I'm going to keep you down because to the privileged folk, you know, uh, uh, equality feels like oppression. Right. To them, because they're so used to the world bending to them. Right. Right. <laughs> You're not asking, if you asking for just what they got, they're like, oh, what you trying to take from me? <laughs> right. Right. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the mindset of these folks. It's like, this is crazy. It's like, what do you, you want equality? You take a mind? This no, I just, no. <laughs> you know, but it's just, I think we have to we have to to sustain this thing. We have to be real about what we're talking about. We yeah. can't hide behind these terms: systemic racism and institutionalized racism. No, no, it's it's you every day. Right. <laughs> it's you every day, uh, Mr. Charlie. <laughs> Mr. Charlie. <laughs> to my black exploitation, <laughs> Mr. Charlie. <laughs> anyway, I feel like. This uh, coronavirus thing is making them really look and see mm-hmm. what's happening, right? You know, and, and it's it's got them in a point where there is no sports, there is no distractions to speak of, and they have to face it. You know, it. facing situations like, "Golly, I've been that wrong." <laughs> Why why is it that we have to do all the heavy lifting and the we have the burden of explaining this to the people that created it? That's right, right? Trying to explain the light bulb to Thomas Edison. Well, you invented it. You should be educating me. You know what you're doing wrong. Fix it. Yeah. You know, Pre- treat me like a white guy when you pull me over. <laughs> Treat me like a white guy when I walk into the store. Mm-hmm. Treat me like a white guy when I get sit down for that job interview. There you go. Hello. Yep. I mean, okay, well, pretty simple from where I'm sitting. Yeah, it, it's going like do unto others. Yeah, that that golden rule that <laughs> these, do that unto white, others. <laughs> these white Christian evangelicals. Oh my God! Bowing to the to the altar of Agent Orange. Yep. And they got their hands raised on Sunday. Well, and well we talk about love one another. Yep. Well, Ryan, Hold the up Hold upside down. I, I see we have you all fired up, Ryan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> to share a few comments from from the chat room. Um, Terrence said, absolutely. He was talking to your point earlier. And uh-huh. listen to how they view the world. It's completely right. different. They know we didn't finish what has been a pain what has been a pain for over 400 years. They don't Mm -hmm. see peaceful protests as the answer, but lawful protests are, they will be loud, challenging and demanding. 
Yeah. Uh, he goes on to say, we have been fed sleeping pills in the past with no noticeable change. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Gina also comments, she says, get rid of the electoral college. It was created because of slavery. Amen. And That's then right. uh, Amen. Ter- Terrence says that there's no noticeable change over the last 50 years. Covers are off. Exactly. All right. Well, there it is. There you have it. Put it to you. Laid it out there straight, Chief. You know, <laughs> I, I, yeah. When we and we talk about systemic stuff too. As I go back, you know, I know the police are getting the rap. You know, mm-hmm. and again, I'm gonna go back to my devil's advocate piece. But mm-hmm. you know, I feel about them almost in in some ways the way I feel about forty five. Oh, uh, it, it, because. He is, he's he's a, a a a problem in and of itself, but he is to me he is a representation of what the real problem is, and so yeah. the police officers mm-hmm. are really just carrying out what the statutes all allow them mm-hmm. to do. They, right. they get the chance to do. You know, they're it's not like yeah. they come out and say this is what I can do. There are laws and everything else that kind of protect them so it, it's just again it's society it's this systemic thing this institutionalizing right. it is this process by which we have given over to them this is what you are supposed to do you are supposed to protect us and by us i mean not all of you all <laughs> i mean us and you are to protect us from them whoever and that's and that's how it's set up so they're just carrying out what they're allowed to carry out um, you know, they have the, the, the right to take a life and that's, that's huge, yeah. that's huge. you know? Well, um, and, and, um, you know, so on, on that point, again, that's where we come back to what we always talk about. That's why voting so important. Right. That's why, because the people who, who, you know, you, you think it doesn't make a difference, but it does make a difference because if it didn't make a difference, look at all the trouble they go through to jack up these votes. <laughs> right. If, they, if your vote didn't count, they wouldn't spend that money and that time Make sure trying to fighting do hard. The gerrymandering, the redistricting, all the other stuff. Right. That, why, why do all that? If, if it was so easy for that, if your vote didn't matter, so why right. do all of that? Right. So it does matter. It does, you know, as, as our congressman, we talk about Baltimore, you know, uh, Kwesi and Fume, who's in, in Congress again now in Baltimore, won his uh, city council. Uh, election by one vote. Hmm. One vote. Now look at what all he's done since then. Had he not been in city council, he wouldn't have been in a position to be able to be uh, uh, in Congress. And then that wouldn't put him in the NAACP. You know, just look at all this stuff. What one vote could have changed that whole thing. Right. Um, so the vote does matter because it, it determines who you put in office. It determines who the mayor is, who they hire as a police chief, who who, where the judges go, you mm-hmm. know, how they interpret the laws. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, incidentally, they had a, they had a win at the Supreme court that, that nobody thought was going to happen yeah. you know, this past week. Yeah. Um, some people who they thought were, were, were right leaning actually didn't go that way um, uh, in their mind. So that maybe, maybe there's something that's happening with this politicization of, of everything. Sure. Um, even now they're politicizing the whole, the, the COVID thing is becoming political. You know, you can almost tell the Republicans and the Democrats about who wears a mask and who doesn't. Exactly. Hey, that's it. Right. <laughs> well, well, you know, you know, Sinbad, one of the things that, um, you, you yeah, brought up I, just ja- I just jacked some of my white friends up. I said, you're not wearing a mask. Are oh, you making a statement? How about that? You're making a subliminal statement to me. Yeah. Right. That's right. Talking to me without a mask and I'm standing up here with one on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, where are you? <laughs> With a mask on my mask. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well uh, you, you, you know, uh, then, man, I'm, 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 I got to say this, too. I'm really afraid that we're sliding into a dictatorship. That's what it feels like to me. Mm-hmm. Because this, uh, Donald Trump in the White House, he doesn't follow any rules. And his partner being Vladimir Putin, and they all up with each other in the whole shot. And I'm 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 just I'm just afraid. Now they stacked the Supreme Court, so when them anything come up legal that has to go to the Supreme Court, 
You know he's gonna pull that string. Well, you, you know, you, you all bring up some that. some real interesting points about um, you know, just this whole protest thing. And and one of the points that's coming home to roots now, then bad, and you and I have talked about this, is that now people are starting to understand where the real power is. And what I mean by that is law enforcement officers, no matter what, what color uniform you wear, whether you're a state trooper, city officer, municipal officer, sheriff, and so forth, you get your authority from the people. The people said that through legislation that we're going to give you the authority to protect us, to detain people. And when the circumstances are appropriate, we're giving you the authority to take a life. And Mm -hmm. we're doing that because we believe that because of the process that you go through, that you are a person of integrity that's going to take this right very seriously. And what you're seeing happen now is, is that number one, uh, I, I know the guy in DC says he's a law and order president. And these are the things he's going to do. But what he doesn't understand is there are no laws on the book that I'm aware of that says that the Adamsville community must have a police department. There are no laws that say that there's nothing in the constitution that says that you have to, um, that you have to uh, have a police force. Now, the reason I say that is because now you see, for example, Minneapolis, they're, they're now moving to, it looks like disband their police department. Now, do I necessarily agree with that? I do not. I think there is a lot of reform that needs to happen and a lot of things that can be done collaboratively to make things better, to include, you know, regulations and more things and, and better training and so forth. But you see in Minneapolis and also in Camden, when the people have said, nope, we're not getting what we're paying for for our tax dollars. We're taking that authority back. That's what has happened. And now you see people resisting that understanding that you work for the people, whether it's in Baltimore City, Los Angeles, El Paso, it makes no difference. When the people have said that we are not satisfied with the the service we're receiving for our dollars, then we are going to pull that authority and that privilege of serving this community back. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right. It's a, it's a lot. <laughs> it, it's a lot. Um, but you gotta, you know, you, you can't give up, you know, you got, you gotta stay in it. I mean, it, it's a, it's a shame, but you know, you got what you're going to do. You gotta, you gotta stay in it. You can't just, you just can't turn in. I mean, Folks have been through, you know, we've always had something that we've had to contend with. Um, and at, at one point you just keep waiting, like, okay, when y'all going to get it? Because, you know, as a, Chief, we were talking about this before. I was, I was saying uh-huh. that it, it, it's, it doesn't feel like it, but racism is not our disease. Right. It, it's right. not ours. Right. You know, as I was saying, it's like it, racism is, 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 the, the white folks flu. Yes. And, and we're the Kleenex. Right. Essentially. We're, we're the ones, you know, the, we get discarded. We're the ones that catch all of the, the nastiness yeah. of it, but it's not our disease. Right. It's, it's not. It's so, and, and we have bent over backwards and, you know, many times um, just trying to, to, to survive. And it's like, nope. Now, as we said, the young folks are like, mm, we're not doing that anymore. We, we've tried that. That didn't work. You know? So again, as, as prophetic as, as uh, uh, James Baldwin was all those years ago, who was a kind of a witness to the times and he kind of, you know, was observing and writing folks and warning them all the while, like the great prophets back in the Bible time, like, the fire next time y'all, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to get to that point where it's enough. And as he said, you know, being black in America is like, being in a rage all the time. All the time. All the time. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And I've got my I've got, you know, I've got a, a 20 20 year old daughter and a and a a 12 year old. One's about to be 21, one's about to be uh 13, but you know, something ignited in that 20 year old mm-hmm. when all this went down. I mean, she's always been creative and artsy. 
Mm-hmm. But, and her thing is like film now. She's in, in film school. But 